Hello everyone and welcome to Automation Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to show you the free and pro versions and how to create your very first automation. So let's jump right into it. Automation Toolkit allows you to create your very own buttons that can do almost any action that you want. These buttons are called automations. The first time you run Automation Toolkit, a new automation will be automatically created. When you click this button, the automation will run, but currently nothing happens because this automation is empty. So let's edit this automation and give it a purpose. Right click on the button and click Edit. Now this is the editor where all the magic happens. Here we'll create the automation and essentially program what it'll do. So let's try to make it do a very basic function. Think of a scenario. Imagine that you've created a composition and dragged in some footage, but their resolutions don't match. In this scenario, you want to adjust the resolution of the composition so it'll match the resolution of the footage. We'll now create a button that does exactly that. We'll start by adding a new line. The default line is a loop. I'll explain a bit more about it because the loop is the main mechanism that'll let you automate tasks and perform actions on multiple layers, project items, and other types of objects. In this dropdown, you choose the type of loop and it determines what kind of objects the loop will go through. The default option is layers in the active composition. Essentially, the loop will go through all layers in the active composition from start to end and run the same operations on all of them. That's why it's called a loop. The same actions are repeated over and over and over. But keep in mind that it doesn't necessarily mean that the results of these actions will be the same for each layer. With the help of other types of automation lines that we'll put inside the loop, it'll become smarter and it'll differentiate between layers based on their properties. It'll be able to perform different actions on each of the layers in our composition. You can view it as an assembly line that goes through many items and modifies them one by one based on factors that you define. I know, I know, it sounds complicated, but it really is very simple once you start using it. We'll add a new line inside our loop by clicking this plus button and change its type to if. The if line purpose is to add logic to your loop. It's a condition or a rule that'll make the loop exclude the layers that don't obey this rule and affect only the layers that you want it to. In our scenario, in order to change the resolution of the composition to the same resolution of our footage, we first need to make our loop identify the layer of the footage. In this case, the footage is the only layer that's selected. So, we'll use this condition to help our loop find the footage. Here, we make sure that our loop is chosen, and in the third dropdown, we choose Selected. You can actually read this line as a sentence. Look, if the current layer that the loop goes through is selected. And here, you choose if this statement is true or false. Remember that the loop goes through all the layers. So, if the statement is true, it'll go through each layer and ask if it's selected. And only if the answer is yes, then it will actually perform actions on it. We'll add one more line inside the IF by clicking its PLUS button. Change it to a variable. Variables can be compositions, numbers, words, layers, basically things that you can save and easily access later. Our goal here is to find our composition and save it for later as a variable. Typically, when you want your automation to find a composition, you'll need a loop that goes through all the items in the project. But in our case, there's a much easier way. We've already identified our footage layer, so we can now tell our automation to also save the composition that contains that layer. We'll click here to change the name of this variable to composition. Renaming the line won't affect its operation, and it's only to help you keep things simple and more organized. Believe me, you'll thank me later. Change the variable type to item. Item is a short for a project panel item, like a composition, for example. So our variable now knows that it's supposed to contain a composition. Let's tell it which one. We will select our loop, which is called uh, Loop 1, because I forgot to give it a proper name. Sorry. <laughs> and then Containing Comp. So let's see what our automation is doing so far. 
It goes through all the layers in the composition, and only if a layer is selected, it saves its containing composition as a variable. Great! Let's move on. We'll add another line inside the if and change it to set. Set lines allows you to change the parameters of almost anything within After Effects. It's called set because it sets the values of different things. In this case, we want to set the resolution of the composition to the same resolution as the footage. The composition variable was selected automatically, so the line will affect the composition just like we want. Select the width and set it to loop 1 width. This line will change our composition's width to our layer's width. Let's try to run this automation and see how well it works. Fingers crossed. Just make sure that your composition is in the active window and press run. Awesome. Well, I'm impressed. The composition is now the same width as the footage, but that's only half the job. Let me undo it. Now we can repeat the set line for the height, too. We do the same thing again, but this time we select height, and then height again. Let's run it again. Perfecto! Our automation is now finished. This, of course, is a very simple automation and can be improved in numerous ways, but it's a great way to learn the basics of Automation Toolkit and the mindset that's required to create all kinds of automations. Let's give our automation a name. Now you can run it by simply clicking its button in the main window. Now that we're done, I want to go over some more features of the editor. On the left toolbar, you have the Settings button, Undo and Redo, Copy and Paste. You can color the lines and add lines in custom places. Let's go over the settings of the automation. Here, you can give the automation a name too, and I also recommend adding a description. You can also see how many lines are in the automation. And there are some more advanced settings that we'll skip for now. Click Save. You can import more automations by dragging and dropping automation files in any category, or create a new one by clicking this button. You can export your automations as files by right-clicking and Export. Keep in mind that the free version can only hold five automations at a time. But you can still create an infinite number of automations and save them as files, so you can load them later. If you want more, and who doesn't want more, you can always upgrade to the Pro version with some extra features and no limitations. I promise you that this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Automation Toolkit, and with enough time and practice, you can create almost anything. Please let me know in the comments what kind of automations you'd like to create with Automation Toolkit, and I might make a tutorial that shows you how to create them.